Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. As you can see, I'm not sitting at my bench this morning. I'm sitting in my front room just outside of my tying room and I'm about to dye some materials. Let me tell you how I'm gonna do this video. First off, I'm just gonna walk through all the materials you need and it's really not as complicated as it might sound or look. And then we'll just walk through the process of dyeing a few actual materials. Now, the first thing you're gonna need is just a space to do this in. You can do it in the kitchen. It might get a little bit messy, but it doesn't really have much stink to it. You've got a little bit of vinegar smell, but it's really no worse than dyeing Easter eggs. So what else do we need? I will walk through this, you know, from my right to the left, talk about it. So first off, you need a heat source. I've got a, a hot plate right here, and then a stainless steel, this is probably an eight quart uh, spaghetti pot. Pretty cheap. I think I could pick this up just for this purpose at Walmart for about $9. It does have a lid, which will come in handy when you're letting materials, you know, stew in the dye bath. I've got a meat thermometer here too. This is kind of optional, not truly necessary. I'll show you how you can test the temperature without a thermometer. I've also got a, just a little small measuring spoon right here. It's a one fourth teaspoon. We're not gonna be exactly that precise. You could just use a regular spoon if you need. I've got the dyes right here. I've got eight colors of Jacquard dyes. Not very expensive, maybe $10 for all eight of these. I'll put the links to anything you might need in the description. I've got another pot right here that I use to soak the materials before I dye them and then to rinse them when I'm done. I've got a big jug of vinegar right here, which certainly don't need a gallon of it. We only need a little bit. And then I've got some regular dishwashing detergent right here that we will use just a couple of drops to you know, prepare the materials before we dye them. This is Eric Leiser's 1973 book, Fly Tying Materials. I'm not gonna do a review on that, but that's what I've been going by. It's a great book on how to get materials, how to prep them and, and store them and, and you know, dye and bleach, etc. I've also got a salad spinner here, and that's certainly optional, but it really does help to dry the materials a lot quicker. Now, about the materials. Okay, Let's see if you can see that. I've got some Red Fox here. So first off, thanks to Ron Brooks and Lee Mowers who sent me a lot of this stuff that I get to practice my dyeing on. So thank you very much, my friends. So I've got some Red Fox here, some Nutria, Mink, Muskrat, Badger, some Silver Fox, uh, Coyote, Deer Hair, and then some of the stuff I dyed yellow and purple last night just practicing. Also have a couple of chicken feathers here. I didn't have any white duck feathers, but the process is pretty much the same. Some of the materials you might need to leave in a different dyeing times, but I'll explain that as we go as well. And one last thing before we get started, I am far from an expert in doing this. I've been dyeing materials for, oh, I guess about two days now, because yesterday was the first time. But I found out it's not really that complex, and you don't have to be overly scientific about it. And it's not that hard to get some basic materials dyed. Granted, it would take a lot of practice if you're really trying to fine tune it and get some really fancy colors or some really specific shades. But for the most part, what I'm doing, I'm doing like, this is a patch of possum right here. I dyed this yellow last night. And how I'm gonna do my dubbing, I'm just gonna take some basic colors. I might dye some, you know, possum, I might dye it yellow, blue, red, uh, green, brown. And then when I've got a basic set of colors, then I'll make my dubbing. And if I want some various shades in between all those, I will make that when I'm actually mixing the dubbing. And then I'll get you know a container of several different of the shades of colors that I want of just possum. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for maybe some foxes and some minks. Now let me just walk you through what the process is gonna be, what you're gonna see in a couple of minutes. First off, I will take this pot right here, move this book to the side. I'll just take this pot, you can use a bowl for this, it doesn't have to be a stainless steel or anything. I'll fill it up with hot water, just straight from the tap, you know, whatever your hot water comes out at. Put a little bit of dish detergent in it, not as much as if you were washing dishes, but just a little squirt. And then the materials that I'm about to dye, I will slosh around in there, kind of wash them a little bit. Certainly if it was a, a roadkill and hasn't been pre prepped yet, it's pretty good. It might wash out some of the, the oils in the fur. It gets the fur really pliable, and then it would just take the dye much easier. So after I've soaked the materials that I'm about to dye in this, wash them, rinse them out real good. You don't want too much soap in it before you put it in there. Now I will take my the heat source, 
And I'm just gonna fill this up with enough water to cover the materials that I'm dyeing. Don't put the materials in it yet, just put the water in it and bring it up to you know, uh, a fairly high temperature. If you bring it up to a boiling, you don't want it that hot, that might break down the materials, but bring it up between 160 and 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and a way to tell that is you should be able to stick your finger in it. It, it will be hot, but it's not gonna scald you. So as soon as you see it start steaming, you might want to turn the heat down. If you do accidentally bring it to boiling, just add some more water until it gets back down to where you can stick your finger in it. And if you have a thermometer, just get it somewhere between 160 and 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Then after you've got your water bath to the right temperature, you're just going to put a little bit of dye in it. And we'll show you, it, it takes a lot less than you might think it takes. So whatever you think it might take, probably cut that in half and try with that. Just put it in there, it's gonna be hot water, stir it up, and then when you get any of the lumps out um, and you're at the right temperature, you're ready to put the material in. So then we're just gonna put the material in, slosh it around a little bit, make sure it gets everything gets wet, and if you have to weight it with something, you know, put something a little bit heavier on it, some of the material tends to float. If it's a deer hair or elk hair, it's gonna kind of float, so you'll wanna weight it down with something, and then when you've got that temperature, you're steady between 160 and 180, put the lid on it and then just let it sit. Come back in 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes and check each piece and see how much dye uh, has taken. If you need a little bit longer, um, then just leave it in there a little bit longer. So that's really it for the dyeing. But if, if you stop there, the dye is not gonna take. You're gonna need the fixing agent. And that's where the acid part of this acid dye comes in vinegar or acetic acid, that's the acid we're gonna use. Now in Leiser's book, he mentioned that probably one half cup per gallon of water. I found that it really hasn't taken that much. So I'll put maybe a third, maybe a fourth of a cup in there after I've got it to the right color that I want. And you just put that fixing agent, that vinegar in there, and then let it stew for a little bit longer. That reaction will cause the acid or the dye to set into the materials and then what you do you can take it off the heat source and just look at each individual piece if it's the right depth of color that you want you put it over here in another pot or bowl and you rinse it out now one thing to note if if you're rinsing it out and you're seeing that the color you're dyed is coming off in the water you're rinsing then enough of that probably hasn't set you might want to put it back in the pot of uh, now with the, the vinegar in the water, just for a little bit longer to help that dye set to the, the color you want. Then after you've gotten all your pieces out and you've rinsed them in cold, uh, clean water here, and when you've got it where when you run them through the water, you're not seeing any of that dye color come out, you know the color is set, and you can put it in your salad spinner or just press them out and lay them out on newspaper to dry. And that's really it, it's as simple as that. One other note on the materials, how long you leave them in the dye bath really is dependent on what type of material it is. If it's a white feather and you're dyeing it yellow, yellow dye takes pretty quickly. It won't take that long. But if you're dyeing it a red or a purple, it might take a little bit longer to set. And if you're dyeing something black, it's gonna take even longer. And then some of the furs take different dyeing times too. A big bucktail with big, thick, porous hairs, that might take uh, even longer to dye than say uh, standard deer hair. And then deer hair is probably gonna take a little bit longer than a, a possum or a muskrat. Now, another note to keep in mind, um, any furs that have white in them, they're gonna take dye a lot better. So look at this badger here, an awful lot of white in this one, that's gonna dye pretty well. But look at this muskrat right here. It's brown and the under fur is really gray. You couldn't really dye this thing yellow. You couldn't dye this a, a light green. You could dye it a dark green or a red or a purple or a black, but the material you're working with, the, the fur you're actually working with, will determine what colors you're able to dye it. So just keep that in mind when you do this. And one last thing before we get started, it's kind of a trial and error process. Um, it's simple to do the basics, but it might take a couple of batches before you get that really deep color you want or just the, the right grade you want. It's not a real complicated process, but it might take you a couple tries to, to really figure out what you like. So that's it for the background of how we're gonna do it. Let's actually do it. Okay, let's get started with this. First thing I've got is this pot. You can use a bowl 
of hot water. Uh, just straight from the tap hot water. I'm going to put a small squirt of degreasing dish, you know, hand washing, dish washing detergent. Stir this up here a little bit. And then I'm going to put my materials in. First off, this is a mink. It's a kind of a brownish, maybe a sable color. Put that in here. I've got a patch of Western deer hair. I'm going to put that in here. Patch of possum. And then some regular deer hair. This is wet because it was been bleached. And then I've got a, a patch of badger right here. I'm also going to do some feathers, but they're clean enough. I don't need to soak them in here right now. So I'm just going to stir this up, make sure they get all good and wet. You can actually do this with your hands because it's just, you know, kind of hottish warm water. I'm going to stir it up with a little bit of that dishwashing detergent in there and let them soak. I'm going to let them soak for about 20 minutes just to get them nice and pliable and good and wet. Make sure they're they're underwater. If you need to weight them down with something to hold them toward the bottom, you could just prop a metal spoon right here like that, or just any kind of weights, which would work. I make sure they're upside down so that the 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 majority of the the fibers are submerged. So that's it. We do this for about 20 minutes, and then uh, we'll come back and get the dye bath ready. Okay, I'm back. I just let this sit in this little bit of soapy water for about 20 minutes. I've rinsed it and it's sitting in, you know, clean water right now. So next step, I brought this up to temperature and I screwed up and let it get all the way to boiling. So I had to, you know, add some more water to it. So I've probably got about three inches of water in this pot and I measured the temperature. It's 175 degrees. I can stick my finger in it. It's not scalding. I mean, it's still hot. You don't want to put your whole hand in it, but it's not so hot that it's going to mess up with your materials. So the next step we're going to do is take our green dye right here. So this is the Jacquard green powder. Now it's not dangerous. You don't need a mask. I wouldn't want to breathe these, you know, this powder, but I've got a one quarter teaspoon measuring cup right here. And I'm probably only going to take about half of it. Well, I've got maybe three inches of water, so maybe a little bit more than half, but probably not a whole thing. So I'm just going to sprinkle that in there. And can you see what that is doing? It's definitely a pretty dark green with just what I put in it. So I'm going to stir this up. And this water is already pretty hot, so it's not going to take too long to dissolve. But you can see that's about what the green water looks like right there. So just stir this up for a minute or so. Make sure there are no lumps. Make sure the dye gets good and dissolved. Now, after it's dissolved, we've got this clean, you know, these clean patches right here we're going to put in it. So it's been soaking in clean water. They've been rinsed. There should be no soap. Just going to squeeze them out a little bit. You don't necessarily need to. And I'm just going to drop them in here. Gently put them in here. That was some deer hair. I think that was, um, what was it? Muskrat. Here's a little patch of possum. Here's a patch of kind of brown mink. And here is just a little bit of badger. Now, also, I didn't mention, I've got some feathers here. I didn't soak these because they're pretty clean already. They're just a buff colored chicken feather. So I'm gonna soak these in here. I've got two rights and two lefts. Now, one other thing, this is just a possum that's already been cut from the hide. I'm not going to put this in here right now because it'll go all over the place. But after I've dyed this for 20 minutes, any fur like this, you can put in and dye individually. Uh, that way you can scoop it all up or run it through a strainer to get that back after you've got the color you want for that. So what we'll do here, we'll just, just like we did when we were washing them, just slosh them around a little bit, make sure they, they sink and they get buried. You might need to weight them a little. 
So the feathers are wanting to float up, but that's okay. As long as they're mostly submerged, you're going to be fine. So I've got this temperature. I turned the, the temperature down on it. It's about 175. So you could really probably turn the temperature all the way off and or turn the heat all the way off and put the lid on it. And for the next 20 or 30 minutes, it's going to maintain between 160 and 180, meaning it's at 175. Now it probably won't drop below 160 in the next 20 or 30 minutes. So we're just going to let this sit, check it occasionally, make sure everything is still submerged like it needs to be. And we'll come back in 20 minutes and check it out. Okay, I'm back. You can see I've got the green dye, the material that's been soaking in the green dye. Now take a look at this water. It is a little bit thinner right there. Can you see that? A little bit uh, lighter green than it was at the start. That means a fair amount of this dye has you know, soaked into the material. So now we need to add the fixing agent, which is just the vinegar. So I'm going to take, I've got a half a cup measuring cup right here. And I'm not going to use it, put it all in there. Maybe uh, a little bit halfway, maybe a little more than halfway because I've got, you know, more water in here than I originally started. So I'm just going to pour this in here. My dye bath is still about 160 degrees. I turn the heat down and um, let it, you know, cool off a little bit. So I'm just going to stir this in here, let this material, these materials that are, for the most part, you know, you can, you, let me show you, I guess this is the, if I could pull one of these out with a spoon here, I don't want to dip my fingers in there, or they'll come out green. So I think this was, maybe that, whoa, that was a, almost a mess. But anyway, it's, it's got a pretty decent green shade to all the materials I'm floating in here. Now I've got the vinegar in here. I'm going to just let that reaction take place. And I'll put the lid back on it in probably another 10 minutes just to let this vinegar react with the, the dye and the material and really get it set. So let's come back in about 10 minutes. Okay, I'm back after about 10 minutes of this material uh, soaking in here with the vinegar. I'm going to take them out. See this? This is a, you can tell it's been dyed pretty dark because the back that was a very buff light colored is now a pretty dark green. So I'm just going to sit it over here and you can, can you see that? If I slosh it around a little bit, not much green dye is coming out. So most of the dye has set. Now I'm going to pull all these and at least that piece. Some of the other pieces, maybe not so much. So I'm just going to take this one and set it in here. And if I slosh it around a little bit, it's not really turning this clean water green. So most of the dye it has indeed set. So we got a couple more pieces right here. Oh, this, this mink is starting to fall apart on me. So I'll just put these in here slowly. And it's still salvageable, it's just smaller pieces. See that? Now we've got um, uh, the deer hair here. Let's put this one in here. And what else floating around here in the bottom? I think this was a badger. It looks like it. What you can do is take a Sharpie and write on the bottom what material it is if you're dyeing a whole lot of different types of materials. And here's another couple of pieces of this mink. That mink wasn't real, it didn't uh, hold up too well, but it should be usable. So I think that's everything in this bath right here, except these feathers. So let's, let's see if these buff colored feathers took a green dye. Some tongs would probably be easier to pull these out than uh, a plastic spoon, but okay. So did that take green very well? No, not really. The buff colored with green over it, now it just kind of looks like a darker brown. But we'll float them in here and when they dry, we'll see what color it ends up being. So dyeing brown feathers is probably not 
the easiest thing to do. If these were white, I imagine the green uh, would come through a little bit better. So I'm going to put them in this bath right here. Of, that's room temperature water, and I'm going to go rinse it out again, and then we should have our final product. Okay, I just rinsed these out in this same pot right here. Not much more of the dye is coming out, so any of the dye that's in the material is pretty well set. Let's see how some of this turned out. So this is the deer hair. Um, it could probably have set in this bath. I actually ended up leaving it in the dye bath for about 30, just a little bit more than 30 minutes. So maybe this green would have taken about 40, 45 minutes to really get a darker green. But this is a usable piece. Uh, the, the green will really pop a little bit more after it dries. So I will pull this out and I can either put it in my salad spinner or just kind of compress it like this to get any of that water out. You don't want to mangle it too much and then just lay it flat on a, a piece of newspaper to dry. So let's see some of this other one. What was this piece? I can't even tell, but the green got in here pretty well. Maybe not all the way down to the, the base. It's just a, a lighter green down there, but this is a, a usable piece right here. I believe this was the, the badger, maybe. And what is this piece? This piece might be the possum. Yeah, I think this, this piece was the possum right here. So this got a pretty decent green color right here, and this will look pretty good when it's dry, and then when I'm able to cut the, the under fur off and then mix it in the, the coffee grinder to, to make some actual dubbing. So that piece will be okay right there. And what is this piece? Maybe this was the badger, and then that last one before that was the, the muskrat. So except for the black hairs in here, this one, you know, it got a, a, a decent looking olive green tint to it. Um, as far as the mink went, um, yeah, this one didn't take that well. Uh, it started falling apart on me. So this one, uh, to do mink, it's trial and error process. Maybe I need to keep the temperature a little lower and leave it in a little bit longer. So I don't know, I'm gonna have to try that one again, but. Uh, some of this mink may be usable, but uh, I'm thinking probably not. And it didn't really take a lot of that green anyway, so dyeing mink green just might not be a way to go. And again, we mentioned the, the brown feathers trying to turn these green. I don't think this turned out all that well. Um, we'll let them dry and then see what they look like when they're dry, but I think if you're going to dye feathers, you probably need to start with a white and not a a buff color or a brown color. So that's it for this. You can see the process and you can tell that it's gonna take, um, you know, some practice um, to get your timing right, the temperature right, and the amount of dye you put in. But it's not that difficult. I think most folks can handle this. And, you know, so the yellow I did last night was a little bit easier than this green. And next up, I'm gonna give it a shot with some red. We'll see how that turns out. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Hope you learned something, and uh, we'll take care. We'll see you next time.